Hi everyone and thank you so much for joining me. I have realized that lately I am getting quite a few new subscribers so I just wanted to thank everyone for deciding to give this channel a go and also I've just realized that I haven't exactly introduced myself in any of my videos so uh, for those of you who don't know who I am I'm Kat and uh, this is short for Catalina or if you would say it in Romanian it would be Catalina on this channel we are talking about all things true crime you will also be seeing me doing my makeup as well whilst I talk about the true crime case at times I will also be baking at the same time as I'm talking about true crime cases and maybe some cooking as well it's just because I have quite a few interests and uh, things that I really enjoy talking about and also recording and I don't have time to kind of uh, do focused videos on each of the subjects so I thought that maybe it's a better idea if I kind of join them together in a video so on this channel you will be seeing true crime cases and and also because of the nature of the cases that we are talking about and uh, from the positive feedback that you gave me so far at the beginning of each video I will be translating a word or a phrase from Romanian into English I am from Romania but I live in the UK with that being said I want to thank you all so much for watching the video coverage of Sebastian Kalinowski that I uploaded around two weeks ago now on Friday the 22nd of July I've seen a spike in views in that video which I'm going to link it up here somewhere and I honestly really appreciate all of my new and regular subscribers to this channel now there is a particular reason why I had a spike in views in my first video on Friday last week just a couple of days ago there was a major update in this case the jury reached a verdict and if you haven't seen my community post or if you haven't read the news recently then you won't know what I'm talking about so basically today's video is about the updates in the Sebastian Kalinowski case and also considering a verdict has been reached there are more considerable information out there including a bit of history and also many details which I couldn't get hold of in my previous video now if you are not caught up on the Sebastian Kalinowski case I covered the uh, Sebastian's case in a separate video so you might want to catch uh, up on that one before you have a look at this one so what I want to do is I would like to focus this video on remembering Sebastian Kalinowski rather than going into all the details of the case considering that uh, like I said I covered most of the details in my first video we have some more photos of Sebastian being released we have more family members speaking out and people who came into contact with Sebastian so let's get started but quickly before we do that my usual disclaimer I don't mean to be disrespectful to anyone I talk about in today's video this is for educational purposes only all the information I'm giving you is already found in the public domain and also I'll be sharing my own views and opinions around the case I'm talking about thank you so much now the jury found Agnieszka Kalinowska 35 years old guilty of her son's murder after a six-week trial at Leeds Crown Court her long-term partner Andrzej Latozewski 38 years old has also been found guilty of murder the judge Mrs. Justice Lambert said they will be sentenced in October this year at the earliest the jury took only three hours and a half to find both of these sick people guilty of the murder of 15 year old Sebastian Kalinowski now typically as murder is such a serious crime a sentence like this carries life in prison Sebastian Kalinowski died of an infection caused by weeks of assaults at the hands of his mother and her long-term partner Sebastian was beaten with a bed sled whipped with an extension cable and stabbed with a needle all while being subjected to the most derogatory and inhumane verbal abuse a 15 year old boy surrounded by his school friends the classroom was Sebastian Kalinowski's sanctuary where he made friends and loved to work hard but when he went home he was tortured by his own mother and his stepfather 
Agnieszka Kalinowska and Andrzej Latajewski enjoyed a life that Sebastian never got the chance to have. He died last August with 81 injuries to his body. He had 23 untreated fractures to his ribs, a shadow of the boy who spent happier times in Poland. Latajewski forced the increasingly weak boy to carry out exercises as a form of punishment, like the ones he did himself. He kicked and beat the boy using techniques he'd practiced in the gym. Kalinowska joined in the brutal assaults on her son, as well as encouraging her partner to use his strength to hurt him too. CCTV inside the family home, there to monitor Sebastian's every move, captured the horrific attacks. Words can't really describe how horrendous the footage was of uh, at points the final moments of Sebastian's life. It was a very distressing case to prosecute, but the important thing is when we make decisions at the Crown Prosecution Service is to almost put a motion to one side when we make any important legal decisions. Neighbours of the family home saw nothing. I don't understand why mom won't protect the boy. It's uh, her own blood. I can't really understand how a mother, like you carry a child and it's everything. People who worked nearby saw the ambulance finally called more than two hours after Sebastian lost consciousness. When help arrived, he was lifeless. He was just a normal guy, a little boy. You know, We saw him playing football in the yard. We didn't see a lot of him, but everyone that speaks about him that knew him said he was a really nice, sweet, innocent guy um, that just liked playing football like every other boy of, of his age, really. It's hard to comprehend how other humans could treat a young lad. Innocent young boy like that, really, it's hard, yeah. No one at North Huddersfield Trust School could comprehend it either. The head teacher said Sebastian arrived early and stayed late because he loved school. He'd been a pupil since he arrived from Poland 10 months before he died. He wanted to be engaged in learning. He wanted to um, develop his language, is obviously so important. Uh, and he wanted to make friends. Uh, and, and, he, and he did that, he did that really well. He was just happy here and he'll be very, very fondly remembered. He, he was very interested in maths, very interested in sport. So he would just, just been looking forward to, to a, a future in Huddersfield. And the, the world was his oyster, like, as often, often is the case when you get to the age that, that, that he was. So I'd, I'd like to think he would, he would, have, been, he would, he would have been ready to, to carry on engaging in learning, to really grow in confidence and, and just settle into life in this country completely. But that future was cut short by two people who beat and killed him, then covered their tracks and were never brought to the attention of social services or the police. This is a really shocking and a tragic case. Children's charities say everyone should be vigilant. And we would urge people to, to speak out and we acknowledge that it can be difficult and there will be fatigue from members of the public who have seen a number of high-profile deaths over the last year, 18 months. But we also know that day to day, worried members of the public coming forward and reporting the concerns actually helps to safeguard children every day of the week. There is a safeguarding practice review into how and why this happened to an innocent 15-year-old boy who never called for help. Well, Katie is in Huddersfield Forest tonight. Uh, Katie, what has been the reaction today? Well, John, uh, you heard in my report, neighbours have expressed their shock, but they've also said that they can't comprehend how it could happen here on one of Huddersfield's busiest roads. Thousands of people must have come past this front door every day, uh, oblivious to what was happening inside. Uh, those verdicts, well, West Yorkshire police have welcomed the uh, guilty murder verdicts, but the most powerful words came from the Crown Court judge, Mrs Justice Lambert. Uh, she said the jury had to endure watching some harrowing video evidence over the past six weeks and she said they would never have to do a jury service again because of what they've been through. Well, as for Latajewski and uh, uh, Kalinowska, they will be back in court in October to be sentenced. Okay. Andrew Fell, head teacher of North Huddersfield Trust School, issued a statement after Agnieszka and Andrzej were convicted of murder, saying that Sebastian will be fondly remembered and greatly missed. He said that Sebastian was happy at school, his spoken English improved significantly, which helped him 
blossom from a shy student into one with much more confidence and a strong circle of friends. He was caring, intelligent and fun-loving. He will be remembered for his charming smile, his sharp sense of humor and his kindness. The head teacher also said, quote, he embodied what our school stands for in demonstrating a positive attitude to school, treating others with respect and showing a determination to make the most of his education. Our close-knit school community is deeply saddened by the loss of Sebastian." End of quote. When Sebastian joined the school in October 2020, he spoke very little English, but he worked closely with the school's Aspire team who helped him build relationships and develop more confidence. The Aspire team is basically a team which helps students who don't speak English or have English as a second language to make their transition easier and to learn English by visual learning and other resources. Sebastian's head teacher had said that he was obvious Sebastian was dedicated to learning and excelled in quizzes which tested knowledge of different topics designed to help his integration into school in a new country. Sebastian used Google Translate to communicate with others in his tutor group and he even taught his phone tutor the Polish word for good morning, which is Dzień dobry. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. I had a couple of Polish uh, colleagues back in the days when I used to work in a hotel and uh, we kind of greeted each other in Polish. So, Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. I hope. This then became a daily routine for the form tutor to greet Sebastian in Polish, to which his response would be a polite smile and a nod followed by the correct pronunciation. Sebastian enjoyed maths where he stood out amongst his peers and he managed to make a huge impression on his teacher. He was really keen to consistently improve and to show what he was capable of achieving. Sebastian was born on July 16, 2006 in Kidzin, Poland. I'm sorry if the pronunciation is wrong, but I'll also put it on the screen. For much of Sebastian's life, since he was four, Sebastian had lived with his biological father in Poland. When he was four in 2010, his mother Agnieszka moved to the UK with her then partner and Sebastian lived full time with his biological father and he also had contact with his maternal grandparents. In October 2020, he moved to the UK to live with his mother and stepfather. Agnieszka, Sebastian's mother, was born in Poland where she gave birth to Sebastian. She knew Andrzej as a child but was reintroduced to him in 2010 when he was visiting Poland. He lived in the UK at the time and Agnieszka with her then partner moved to the UK as well where they subletted a room from Andrzej. Afterwards, Agnieszka and Andrzej started a relationship and lived in a number of places across Yorkshire, including Wakefield, before settling in Huddersfield. They had been together 11 years at the time of Sebastian's death, and both of them worked at IOH Burger in Leeds Road, Huddersfield. In October 2020, Agnieszka and Andrzej arranged for Sebastian to move to Huddersfield and live with them. A friend who had met Agnieszka on a college course described her as smitten with her son. She was happy that her son was with them, but said that he often lied and was playing truant a lot. Now, if you are not familiar with the term truant, this is basically skipping school. Andrzej was born in Poland on May 25th, 1984. He has a 14-year-old son living in Poland. At the time that he met Agnieszka, he was living in West Yorkshire. During his time in the UK, Andrzej worked as a casual laborer and by August 13, 2021 was working at IOH Burger on Leeds Road. He held a provisional driving license on the car which he would drive to take Agnieszka on trips. A family friend told the court during the trial how he believed Sebastian was an inconvenience to Andrzej. The man who was married to a college friend of Agnieszka's said that Andrzej mentioned Sebastian needed to treat his mother with more respect. 
Sebastian sadly died on August 13, 2021 and his day started like many he had already injured with an assault. After being assaulted by both his stepfather and mother, the footage showed Andreas carrying Sebastian out of his bedroom at 8.26 a.m. At 8.41 a.m., just after Agnieszka was seen putting a duvet on the floor, Andreas was seen on the CCTV footage carrying Sebastian, who was unconscious and wet. He was placed on the duvet and Andreas was seen filling his chest and carrying out chest compressions. Footage from Sebastian's bedroom later showed Andreas pouring water into his mouth before the camera was turned off at 9.26 a.m. There was a two and a half hour delay between Sebastian becoming unconscious and the emergency services being called. Just before 11 a.m. and before the emergency services were called, Andreas made a call to his boss at IOH Burger and then sent him a message telling him he would not be in that day as he had big problems. Just before 11 a.m., an ambulance was called and paramedics and police attended at 301 Leeds Road and Sebastian was taken to hospital. Sebastian was seen naked on the footage before the CCTV system was turned off, as was Andreas, but both of them were dressed when the emergency services arrived. A paramedic noted a bruise on Sebastian's chest when he opened his top to carry out CPR. On August 13, 2021, Sebastian was pronounced dead following his arrival at Huddersfield Royal Infirmary and both Agnieszka and Andrzej were arrested and later charged. The police became quite suspicious of them both, especially considering that uh, their story was that Sebastian drowned. And uh, the police, when they checked the house the first time, one of the police officers actually realized that, hold on a minute, there's no water in the bathtub, so something is not quite right. Their story doesn't really make sense. So the police, of course, that they decided, like I mentioned in my first coverage of this case video, the police decided quite early on in the investigation to get a search warrant. They got a search warrant out. They, they, they took everything from the house, all the devices. They found the CCTV system. The CCTV system, Andres had already taken off the walls and he kind of disconnected all the system and he tried to get rid of the evidence and all the footage and uh, the police actually found the CCTV system in one of the drawers in the bedroom of uh, Andreas and Agnieszka. Before the Honorable Mrs. Justice Lambert gave her legal directions, prosecutor Tom Story read out a translated letter that had been written to Andreas by Agnieszka in September last year. Agnieszka was questioned about the letter and claimed that she wrote it to find out what had happened to Sebastian and she cut contact with Andreas straight afterwards. The translated letter said, quote, I try to be strong, but it's hard in the situation we have both found ourselves in. I'm on my own in the cell. I have a landline and a code and five pounds credit to make a call. I have 20 pounds credit as I have no one to call. I have got a telly in the cell. I have a kettle here and three books in Polish so I can read them. It is better to call than to write letters, but at this moment in time, even a letter is magical. There are only English women in the prison, not Poles. Finally, the time has come to learn English. I have applied to get a job, but I'm waiting as it drives me crazy being in the cell all day on my own. I do not like the food and I throw it away. In a week, I can send up to two letters. Please find out how you can call me on the landline in my cell. I receive five pounds credit on my prison account to buy the essentials. I'm waiting until tomorrow to get razors as I'm terribly hairy. The girls make their best so I don't feel lonely. They got me a coloring book. We sit outside and there are moments where I can let my head rest a bit. I've been trying to sign up for the gym. It always helps your mind. The only thing that gives me strength is the thought of you. You're still out there and belong to me. Despite everything, you have me and I will not leave and will not stop loving you. Too many beautiful moments we had together. I thank you so much for your letters and words of comfort. Remember, you are mine, my darling. End of quote. This is the same woman that was uh, arguing in court 
that she was a victim of DV and she was completely petrified of Andrej and that's why she allowed the assaults, the constant continuous assaults to be inflicted on Sebastian because she was just too scared of Andrej. This is how a scared woman writes a letter, especially when she knows that she's in prison and she's far away from him. So there is absolutely no reason for her to write a letter at all. And also, let's remember that she's in prison with English women. By the time that these women will find out what she did, oh, she's not going to have a great time in prison. I, I think that 90% I'm sure of that actually, that she's not going to have a nice time in prison because she's, she's Polish and uh, as it seems she doesn't know how to speak English so obviously that the women in prison at the moment or maybe now they do know because now it's just about everywhere, everywhere in the news so I'm quite sure that she's not going to have a great time in there and also do you have a landline in your cell, in your jail cell? Really I had no idea that there is a landline in the cell I mean, talk about comfort, but seriously, you get murderers in prison with this kind of commodities, like having a landline in her cell and she's in her cell on her own. Really? I mean, if you go to Romania, for example, a prison cell in Romania is, God forbid you are in there, quite honestly. I'm just going to put that on the screen, but I'm not sure if you are familiar with Russian prisons, for example, but Romanian prisons, for example, are very much similar to the Russian prisons. So, God forbid that you actually get into one of those prison cells because all the privileges and all the commodities that that uh, prisoners have in the UK is, is just quite astounding to me, if I'm honest with you, because in Romania and in Europe in general, in Eastern Europe, also in Russia and in other countries, you don't really get these commodities. And when you are a prisoner, you are treated as a prisoner. And uh, most, of the, most of the times, as far as I know, a lot of your human rights are being, uh, you know, whatever they are. But again, I'm saying for these uh, horrible crimes of, and for these for this murderers, I don't think that they should be, I don't think that there should be um, an argument about their human rights and things like that because in the end they took a life so yeah, I'm not gonna get there. Lastly, in this letter, have you heard once Agnieszka mentioning Sebastian or as she claimed trying to find out what happened to him? There is absolutely no mention of her own son that they murdered and there is absolutely no remorse there whatsoever there's no mention at all about Sebastian Agnieszka also even accepted a marriage proposal and told Andrzej that she would marry him anytime and anywhere even in a tracksuit yes it's just beyond comprehension uh, my blood is boiling again oh oh my god the prosecution closed its case with Jason Peter, Queen's counsel, telling the jury they can be sure both Latozewski and Kalinowska are guilty of Sebastian's murder. The prosecutor said, quote, not long after 8.30 a.m. on Friday 13th of August last year, Sebastian's body simply gave up on him. He relented to the months and months of it may be now whether the defendants accept it or not that you can safely conclude that there in reality is no other word suited to Sebastian than that of torture. You may also conclude that in effect is what happened to him. He was tortured to death and we say you would not be wrong. End of quote. Mr. Peter said the prosecution say both defendants cooperated and supported each other even now. He has asked what the intention was and says it must have been really serious harm when inflicting those rib fractures. Neighbors of 301 Leeds Row Sebastian's house said that they rarely saw Agnieszka Andrzej or Sebastian, only catching a glimpse of him when he was walking the one mile journey to school or spotting Andrzej working out in his back garden homemade gym. Michael Brown, whose home overlooks the family's back garden, said that the family kept to, kept to themselves and Sebastian was a very quiet boy, but always smiled whenever they saw him. For Michael, the realization of what happened 
just a stone's throw from his own home left him feeling mind tinglingly numb. Quote, just to understand that something so horrible was happening to someone so small, not just 50 yards from our house, in something that was meant to be a sanctuary of safety, it's horrific, end of quote. Another neighbor, Sylvia Schroeder, said she was moved to tears by the news of Sebastian's death, quote, I started crying because I saw him all the time walking alone to school. It was tragic, end of quote. Despite being seen as a quiet, shy boy by some people, head teacher Andrew Fell said that he watched Sebastian grow into a model pupil during his short time at the school. He had a wicked sense of humor. He just wanted to embrace everything and make the most of his time in school and his time in another country. In just a few days, Sebastian would have been finishing his final year at senior school. His GCS is done, a long summer ahead of him. He should have been contemplating how best to spend his holidays, his whole adult life ahead of him. Instead, his mother and her partner are contemplating beginning their life sentences for his murder. During the course of the six-week trial, the jury watched hour after hour of the footage recorded inside the family's home at 301 Leeds Road, Huddersfield. They watched on in horror as clip after clip recorded over several months was broadcast on TV screens inside Court 4 at Leeds Crown Court. After they found Kalinowska and Latozewski guilty, Judge Mrs. Justice Lambert told them they would never have to serve on a jury again after what they had been forced to see and hear. In one 30-minute recording, Andres could be seen hitting Sebastian more than 100 times, kicking, punching, and kneeing the boy. At one point, he grabbed Sebastian's wrist to stop him from being able to protect himself. Now just take a moment to comprehend a 30 minute clip and in this 30 minute clip Sebastian was hit more than 100 times and this was one time. Take a moment to grasp this fact. In 30 minutes Sebastian was hit more than a hundred times. Times. Now imagine from January 2021 until August 2021 how many hundreds of times Sebastian was hit before his body just gave up on 13th of August 2021 because he just couldn't take the hits anymore. How many hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, it's not even an exaggeration, but considering the fact that in a 30 minutes recording, he was hit more than a hundred times. Just imagine how the rest of Sebastian's months before his death were like. While the beating took place, his mother could be seen eating toast in front of the TV, oblivious to the violence being inflicted on her own son. The court heard that as well as beatings, Andreas also carried out cruel punishments to Sebastian, which became more and more violent. Prosecutor Jason Peter, Queen's Counsel, said it appeared that these punishments were precipitated by things such as Sebastian merely dropping food on his bedroom floor or even just having gone to the toilet during the night. One so-called punishment was to stare at the wall in his room. Others involved forcing him to undertake physical and humiliating drills. In one clip, after Sebastian struggled to complete a set of push-ups he had been ordered to do, Andreas can be seen mocking the teenager before launching yet another violent attack. But it was not just Andreas who was caught physically attacking Sebastian. Both Andreas and Agnieszka carried out beatings and then discussed them over text messages, describing some attacks as torture. 
On the day that Sebastian died, his mother was recorded throwing him to the floor after he had struggled to get back to his feet because of his extensive injuries. It was these recordings recovered from the house that played a key role in, com in convicting them. Daniel Lee from the Crown Prosecution Service described the footage as something you will never forget. Quote, it's so unusual to have, first of all, CCTV cameras inside the house, and secondly, that CCTV showing a young boy being tortured and subjected to a catalog of physical and mental abuse, ill treatment and neglect. That footage is harrowing and you can't really prepare for it. The emotional distress watching a defenseless 15-year-old boy being tortured to death is something that once you see, you'll probably never forget. It's not something I've ever come across before, whereby the ultimate downfall of somebody's crimes have been captured on footage. End of quote. The cousin of Sebastian Kalinowski said that his mother and her partner are monsters who should die in prison. In an exclusive interview with ITV News, Victoria Kalinowska has spoken of how she feels sick at being related to Agnieszka Kalinowska. Victoria, who lives in Sebastian's hometown of Kids in Poland, said, quote, Kalinowska is a monster for doing all of that to her own son and for not stopping Andrzej from hurting him even more. He is an even bigger monster and in my opinion, he should rot in jail for what he did to a child that had his whole life ahead of him. They should spend the rest of their lives in prison. End of quote. Victoria, 15 years old, described Sebastian as a very kind and loving person, but shy and closed inside. She said that he was looked after by his biological father after Agnieszka left them when Sebastian was around three years old. Victoria spent time with Sebastian when his father was at work. Quote, we always played different games or we would go outside and play on the playground or just to walk around and talk about school and friends. When I was with him, I could always be myself because I knew he wouldn't judge me and I could always laugh with him about everything. End of quote. All of Sebastian's family, including his biological father, live in Poland. But Victoria said that everyone believed it would be better for Sebastian when he moved to England in October 2020 to start a new life with his mother and stepfather. Victoria found out about what had happened to Sebastian from the British media and then she followed the case online. Quote, we couldn't believe that it all happened and it was very sad and emotional. I read every report and I can't wrap my head around what happened to him. While reading the reports, I think about all the memories I had with Sebastian. It makes me sick and embarrassed thinking about it that this is my family." End of quote. Sebastian was buried in kids in Poland. His grave has become a shrine covered in mementos of his short life. Asked how she feels now, Victoria said, quote, It's difficult to say how I am feeling inside because it is very hard for me. He was the only cousin I had a great relationship with, end of quote. It's truly heartbreaking that Sebastian's family had to find out from the media that Sebastian was murdered. I can't even begin to understand how they must have felt reading all of the horrific details from the press. I wish that there would have been some kind of a way for the police or someone to call them in Poland and let them know rather than them finding out online about the torture Sebastian went through before his body couldn't take it anymore. It's so very sad. Sebastian would have had a great life here in the UK. He could have accomplished anything he wanted. He was turning into a magnificent young adult. But unfortunately, his mom decided that she won't give him this opportunity. Rest in peace, Sebastian Kalinowski. 
Thank you guys so much for staying with me for today's video. Please let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. And also you can leave your thoughts and prayers for Sebastian in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.